Very recently, your foreign minister, Penny Wong, announced your appointment to the National Foundation for Australia-China Relations. What do you think Australia and China need? Well, Australia and China are neighbours and they're going to be neighbours forever. And so we need to find ways to work really cooperatively together. And in my area of science, the capabilities in China has exploded and really grown and is very, very strong. And so my, um, we, we collaborate with many scientists in China and I see lots of opportunities for greater collaboration. It's so important in science. Science is a global effort, not a country effort. But the foundation focuses on more than science. They're focusing on ways China and Australia can, commute, can collaborate in art, in sport, in political science, in understanding each other's indigenous cultures, and also in promoting um, harmony with our Chinese-born Australian population. About 5% of Australians are ethnically Chinese, and the foundation is very focused on ensuring that we promote and grow Chinese culture here in Australia as well. In this role, who do you find yourself working with and what's that experience been like in a world that's really very different to the one that we knew just a few years ago? Well, in my own world of science, I've continued to collaborate and talk to Chinese scientists right through the pandemic. In fact, it's been invaluable. Every week, I would have a call with colleagues in Hong Kong, Beijing and New York right through the pandemic and it allowed me to learn what was happening in their countries, learn what was happening in their laboratories and in their network. Those relationships are incredibly important in science and scientific collaboration relies on trust and you can't build trust overnight. And it's really hard to build trust in the middle of a crisis. So these relationships that I have with many scientists across China go back 20, 25 years. And I think the more we can grow those sorts of trusted partnerships, it will enhance all of the work that we're trying to do. On your appointment, you talked about the real value of established trusted partnerships. What if you're in a crisis, but you don't have 25 years of relationships to lean on? What do you do then? How do you lay the building blocks for trust in that emergency? Yeah, it's a much harder situation, uh, um, but of course it still happened because the other side of a crisis is a common enemy and a real pressure of speed. So I think it can happen in a crisis. It's just a little harder, especially when there's no travel, when you're living in different countries. But in, um, in when you live in a different country, it's a little bit more complex. And I think there is, there has been growing suspicion around relationships with China as well. So these are delicate partnerships, and but they still need to be nurtured and grown. Sharon, we're all people and in AIDS we always talk about putting people first. So to finish up with, do you have a message for all people, young, old, in between? Well, for my message is for people living with HIV. What an extraordinary journey this has been, both for me as a scientist and the people living with HIV. But I see so many incredibly exciting advances right now. Prospect of eliminating transmission and of course one day the prospect of an HIV cure, which while still not with us now, I do think will happen with significant investment and commitment that we have seen along the entire HIV story and it will happen again. Sharon Lewin, thank you very much and thank you for committing your life to helping people other than yourself.